This is the third video about Rancher, Kubernetes, and why Rancher and other SUSE software are the right choice for managing Kubernetes in 2021. The first video went over Rancher's origins and how important a central control plane is for effectively managing Kubernetes, whether it's for one cluster or a million clusters. The next video was a short history lesson in the evolution of the industry and how Rancher continued to deliver value every step of the way. In this video, I want to talk about open source software and why that's so important for a successful Kubernetes strategy. This is true at every point along the spectrum, from individuals learning how to work with Kubernetes all the way up to enterprises managing clusters on multiple continents. Let's get started. Everything that Rancher built and brought to SUSE is open source, and it will stay that way. It will run in all the same places, on any flavor of Linux, in any environment, and that's just the way that it's always going to be. Don't let anyone else try to convince you otherwise as a tactic to get you to use their products instead. Our Kubernetes distributions are 100% upstream Kubernetes, and the only change is in how Kubernetes is packaged. But this is true of any Kubernetes distribution. If it wasn't, there wouldn't be a need for Kubernetes distributions at all. The CNCF has a certification process for Kubernetes distributions that declares that they are conformant, which means that the workloads that run in one will run in another. All of SUSE's Kubernetes distributions are certified by the CNCF. Did you know that you can leverage third-party Kubernetes components within RKE2? Take Amazon's EKSD, for example. This is the distro that they use within EKS, and you can use it to run the same Kubernetes distribution in your dev environments as you do in a production EKS environment. The only problem is that Amazon didn't give you a way to deploy it. It's just a bunch of services, the Kubelet, Kube API Server, Core DNS, and Kube Controller Manager. Rancher was a launch partner for EKSD, and we enabled RKE2 to use the EKSD components instead of the upstream components that it runs by default. Bill Maxwell wrote a blog about it that shows you how to do it. Check it out, it's pretty cool. I'll put a link to it in the video description, or you can scan this QR code with your phone. That sort of thing is only possible because we use unmodified upstream open source Kubernetes, and we communicate with it using the official Kubernetes interfaces. Okay, you're gonna go, whoa, what about K3S? Some people call K3S a fork, as if that means that it's somehow different from upstream Kubernetes. This is yet another of those things where a word has several meanings. If you wanna work on Kubernetes, you have to fork it. There are currently 28,700 forks of Kubernetes, but that's not bad. It just means that 28,700 different people or organizations have a copy of the code so that they can make changes and submit pull requests for consideration. Within K3S, the upstream Kubernetes components are untouched, unmodified, and working exactly as they were intended. K3S is a CNCF certified Kubernetes distribution. It's even part of the CNCF now after Rancher donated it in August of 2020. Do you think the CNCF would accept a Kubernetes fork into their governance? So what makes K3S different? Well, it's simple. We stripped out all the unneeded parts so that it runs in true edge environments. If you run a Kubernetes distribution that isn't optimized for the edge, it's gonna use a minimum of four gigabytes of RAM just for Kubernetes, even on a single node cluster. This is true of any other distro, even RKE and RKE2. Try to fit that on an ARM SBC with only a gigabyte of RAM. K3S runs all of Kubernetes in less than 512 megabytes of RAM on the master nodes, and it has an even smaller footprint on the worker nodes. That gives you at least 512 megabytes of RAM for your own workloads. And with that, you can build a cluster of low power nodes exactly where you need them. Kubernetes uses etcd as its backing data store, but this isn't a requirement. Etcd is simply a key value store that can do leader election. Any database can do key value storage. So K3S acknowledges this and it gives you a choice. Do you already have a MySQL or Postgres database in your environment? Well, you can use that. Do you wanna run on that one gigabyte ARM SBC? Well, then you can use SQLite. Or you can build your own etcd cluster and you can still use that. This makes it possible to run Kubernetes in places where you couldn't run it before if you ask me, that's a good thing. Personally, I use K3S everywhere because being edge optimized means that it's fast. It's really fast. 
If you want to take it for a spin, check out my earlier video on using it with KubeVip and MetalLB. Take a look out the window. Is every house the same? I actually live in a developer community. You can probably hear the backhoe that's on the other side of my wall. But regardless, the houses are all different. When you go to the store, is every car the same? Is everyone buying the same one can of food? Even within the scope of the people who want the same thing, like a work truck for construction or a minivan to take the kids to school, you will find diversity. Different people want different things, even if ultimately everything that we want fits into the same classes of needs and wants. SUSE recognizes this, and we build products that are inclusive of everyone. Take machine learning as an example. It's popular, but you don't need an ML engine in every Kubernetes cluster. Do you want to do machine learning? Super! There are a bunch of different options for machine learning that you can deploy into a Kubernetes cluster that was built or managed by Rancher. Kubeflow, it's a great choice, but we're not going to force you to use it. Use whatever you want. Use what's right for you. Some companies look at what you're doing today, and they offer to help you do that one thing better. But that's today's problem. I mean, it's important, but that's not the end game. The world is moving faster than any one person or company can keep up. And if you're always looking at your feet, you're never looking at the horizon. SUSE looks first at what you're doing today, and then what you want to do tomorrow, next week, next month, or five years from now. And we build innovative solutions that help you get there. We work with you to build the vehicle of your dreams on a reliable, tested, and forward-looking foundation backed by an enterprise SLA. That's what SUSE and Rancher Labs each did before we were one company. And now that we're together, the momentum to future-proof technology is stronger than ever. Isn't that ultimately what it all comes down to? Is making the right decision, making the safest decision, making the decision that secures you both now and in an uncertain future? Throughout this video, I've come back again and again to the idea that open source software is the most important equalizer in the world today. It takes the power that used to only be in the hands of the corporations and it moves it to the hands of the users. Everything that Rancher built and every piece of open source software that SUSE builds is done entirely in the open. Anyone can see every line of code, so anything that I've said in this video, you can go and verify. Compare that to other companies who make similar claims, but whose software is closed source or inaccessible without signing up for a free trial or requesting a demo. If they truly don't modify open source software, where's the source? Where's the proof? I can show you a closed box and I can tell you any story about what's inside of it, but until I open it up and show it to you, you have no reason to believe me and you totally shouldn't. The key to being open is to be open sounds so obvious when I say it. SUSE is one of the largest independent providers of open source software, and we are committed to staying open and to making sure that your voice is heard, that your future is secure, and that you keep your right to be free and to make the choices that are right for you. We're going to keep doing that because it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing for you. It's the right thing for us. And it's the right thing for the world. Do you want to do more with Kubernetes and Rancher? Check out the SUSE and Rancher community. It has resources for every type of practitioner at every skill level. There's educational classes, and it's a community of people just like you who are striving to do more every single day. Come over to community.susa.com and see for yourself what an open and innovative company really looks like.